Hello there. Welcome to Lunch and a Divorce, divorce Lawyer. Um, this month, we're super excited to have Fred Jacoby, Executive Director of Foundations Christian, Christian Counseling in, is it Broadhead? Headsville, Pennsylvania, Fred. I mean, is, I don't get is. there too much. I don't. I don't mean to butcher your your town. No, it's all good. It's broad Headsville, and it's if if anyone's familiar with Northeast Pennsylvania, it's kind of there's a Stroudsburg, Lee Heighton, we're smack dab in the middle, and a small town with uh, we've got a couple uh, uh, we've got a couple uh, 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 fast food restaurants. So you know, at least it puts us on the map. Awesome and. Not only are you the executive director of, I guess, I think it's it's a not-for-profit Christian counseling center, yep. but you're also you also launched a product called Design to Be Mine, a digital course recently. True? Yeah. It is. It is. Okay. Um, how about this one to just kind of open things up a little bit? Uh, and you can start kind of wherever you want in your story. Sometimes people start in junior high, and it's just kind of like, okay, you're in Christian counseling, and um, you've created a digital course. Kind of how did you how did you end up how did you end up there? You know, right? I'm yeah. a I'm a professional football player or something. How did I get there? Sure, sure. Well, I would say um, uh, way back in the womb. No, no, I'm just kidding. Not not that far, but but I probably would say like around the junior high age um, is I actually started. Um, I started experiencing depression and um, I started, I, I was a latchkey kid. Um, you know, I started gaining some weight. No girls liked me. I switched schools. I moved and really not a whole lot of things were going my way. Um, so I started experiencing uh, depression and, and even thoughts of suicide and such. And, and uh, my parents could tell that there was something wrong, um, but I wouldn't really tell them. Um, and so they, they, uh, set up a time with a counselor and they said it was family counseling kind of thing. And, and uh, um, I didn't want to go. And I, I so much did not want to go that I basically ran away <laughs> that day. Okay. And said, Forget it. I'm not, I'm not going. And so anyway, they found me and they said, come on, Fred, you know, just let, let's give it, you know, let's give it a try and you don't even have to say anything or whatever. And I'm like, fine, whatever, you know? And okay. uh, so they took me and, uh, uh, I should say it was still ended up being family counseling. And then the, the counselor didn't talk to me at all. It, it barely even said hi to me. So that ticked me off even more. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I wanted to talk. And, um, you know, I thought that was actually a brilliant move. I don't know if they meant to do it or not, but, uh, but that was, I, I would say that's when the fruits of um, I think counseling just kind of came in my mind okay. um, where uh, beginning uh, kind of the beginning steps of, it probably wasn't until college time where uh, you know, just, tr just trying to declare a major and uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I tried a little business, tried a little engineering. And, um, and then I took this class called Interpersonal Relationships. And honestly, I just loved it. Um, I thought it was awesome. And at the very least, I'm just like, you know what? I, I, I just I want to become a good husband and a good father. So mm -hmm. I'm going to declare family studies. And, uh, and that's kind of what I did. And, and, and now it sounds wonderful. You know, Fred, you're such a great guy. You just want to be a good husband and father. Right. And, and honestly, it was really my own selfishness. I just wanted my kids to look at me and say, dad, you're the best thing in the world. Or my wife, you know, to say, Fred, you are the best husband ever. So it was really a selfish motivation um, that, that I chose family studies. But honestly, um, it just, you know, God used that uh, in my life. And next thing you know, I'm, um, I graduate family studies. I start working in the human services field. And, and uh, then I'm thinking, okay, I've got this faith. Um, and I want to be able to share uh, my faith. And I like to help people. So what am I going to do with that? And, and then went into, uh, went to seminary for a master's degree. And, and after that, I was like, okay, what do you want me to do with this, Lord? And, and uh, so I talked to a bunch of pastors, and there wasn't any Christian counseling center in the Poconos. Um, there used to okay. be one, but they moved out. So I'm like, okay, I guess this is what you want me to do. And, and so that's essentially what uh, starting up Foundations Christian Counseling. And uh, we started off as a nonprofit, uh, started off in a, in a nursery of a church, and, and, uh, 
and next thing you know, you know, this this is the this year is our 20th year uh, anniversary, and uh, we've got over 20 office locations, uh, over 30 counselors uh, throughout Northeast Pennsylvania, uh, Vermont, New Jersey, New York, and it, wow, it, this is the this is the story that only God could write because it's not me. I'm just I'm just a guy. I'm just a counselor, uh, but he's done that some amazing things. So 20 years ago, it's just uh, you and a typewriter, or what? Just about, you know, the typewriters were just, you know, past that point. I'm, but, yeah, I'm, that's weird. Right? That, that's but weird. I did. It's you I and, did, uh, I don't know, a heavy laptop or what? I did use a, a word processor in college with only like three lines per screen, though. So at least that does that does show a little bit of my age <laughs> in there. Um, but yeah, what a blessing it's been. Oh, cool. Um, and in the early, are, are you currently kind of, I mean, I was seeing it. A, a counselor for a, a, a few years there found it very beneficial. That's just totally a side note. But my point is now as executive director, are you kind of, what's your day-to-day -day look like? Are you doing active one-on-one -on -one counseling or are you more, uh, you know, let's call it leadership and management? Yeah, well, I, I do a lot more leadership and management than I used to. And that's for okay. sure. Um, yeah. But I do, I, I want to keep counseling because I, I think that's where my giftings are um, even more so than administrative. Uh, so I, I counsel about seven to eight um, uh, clients or couples uh, per week, uh, just to to make sure that um, you know to, to to stay involved, and uh, just to kind of use those gifts. I also do you know some of our marketing. Uh, it's not a strong point, but I do enjoy the creative juices. Uh, it gets me uh, you know it keeps the emotional aspects <laughs> under control because it can be very stressful to. Uh, uh, to counsel and numerous people, numerous couples and things like that. And so I like to use my creative juices to kind of, you know, keep that emotional balance going on That's as well. Cool. But uh, supervision and, uh, you know, supervising our staff and uh, uh, leadership team and uh, things of that nature. Uh, so it's uh, answering questions, talking to pastors, uh, which I love doing and, uh, and also preparing um, uh, different things such as uh, speaking events and and, uh, and of course, this course that uh, they had mentioned uh, called Design to be Mine and just kind of creating that as well. So it's, uh, it's kind of takes up a lot of my time, uh, but it's, it's, it's fun. I love my job. That's great. Um, yeah. Sidebar, I think, well, number one, I think you might be the first person on the podcast who's not a general Chicago land person. Yeah. But we welcome all comers here. Um, but my what I was going to ask was, are you familiar with the organization Cornerstone Counseling Center of Chicago? I'm not. I'm not. We have a corner counseling center here in Pennsylvania, but I think it's a different one. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, I think it's a popular word in, I don't know, general, let's call it Christian vernacular. No, your, your organization made me think of the same, sort of it's a para-Christian. I think they, they do a lot of sessions around you know, uh, churches and stuff. And it started out of a church called LaSalle Street Church okay. in downtown Chicago. But um, just didn't, didn't know, uh, didn't know, just threw that out there quick. Yeah, uh, no, I used to actually live in Cary, Illinois. Um, really? So it's a, what the Northeast uh, suburb. I didn't know that for a while. Uh, um, just for a summer, basically. My parents okay. moved there while I was in college. And so I, I moved there, I uh, in betweens for like a summer and such and and i love the pizza i can tell you that <laughs> it's funny we moved or let's just say i personally sort of am living in two places including chicago yeah but you know one of the places we're spending some time in is in florida and it's kind of funny how often the pastor of our church references chicago style pizza and i'm not really a pizza guy it's really just kind of funny the like stereotypes of now i'm like the chicago person when we're you know, attending church in Northeast Florida. There so, you go. There you um, go. so this was a funny question when I asked for a referral from a friend of mine for yeah. a counselor three years ago ish. It was sort of uh, a Christian or not Christian. And what is Christian? How does Christian counseling look different than, you know, Dr. Bill over here has no religious affiliation. What's what? What is the difference if if you parse that out a little bit? Yeah, and there's there's a difference not only between Christian counseling and secular counseling. There's actually a lot of difference within Christian counseling itself. Um, but uh, the difference between Christian and secular, I think, ultimately, it has a lot to do with uh, the gospel um, being included 
um, and the, the authority and the presence of scripture uh, being involved in it. A lot of times the secular counseling, the, everyone's got a similar goal in terms of we want to help the person in front of us. Sure. Um, with Christian counseling, it, it goes beyond just helping the person in front of us. It, it means to help them with their relationship with the Lord too, uh, because the closer to God that you can get, the more that it will help with a lot of different struggles, relational struggles, uh, emotional struggles, mental health struggles, and uh, things of that nature too. And so uh, while we all definitely want to help people and help them to function better here, um, there's an eternal aspect, I think, to Christian counseling. And uh, there's different models also, and so uh, and which leads to different places. Uh, so for example, in, in secular counseling, uh, you'd probably hear you know, like self-acceptance, you know, it's really all about you need to love yourself type thing and, and, uh, and such. And Christian counseling is oftentimes, depending on the Christian counselor, I think, um, but the goal is not necessarily to love yourself, um, um, but it might be to accept who you are in Christ and Christ's love for you and his opinion of you, as opposed to you developing a better opinion of yourself. It's just saying, hey, you know what? God loves you immensely. He gave his one and only son for you you have great value and worth in the eyes of the creator of the universe. Um, so find your value through God, through Christ, mm -hmm. as opposed to finding your value in your own opinion of yourself, which is to right. love yourself more, you know, kind of thing. And kind of, you know, do that. Um, was that Stuart Smalley? Um, I think I'm, I know I'm dating myself way uh, for those who used to watch uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, which is, you know, okay. looking in the mirror saying, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. And so they're trying to, you know, he's trying to lift themselves up by their own opinion. But right. in Christian counseling, what we do is just say, hey, it's not about your own opinion of yourself. It's about God's opinion of you. And so let's, you know, focus on, on that opinion of you, because that's where truth really comes from, as opposed to truth coming from inside of yourself. Um, because sometimes people just, you know, don't think very highly of themselves either. <laughs> so that does not help, especially with depression and things of that nature. So that's one of the, the differences at the very least. There's a, there's a um, you know, within the Christian counseling field, there are those who just kind of do more Christian, um, like uh, uh, verses, just applying verses and things and, yeah. and you know, living on Christian principles. Um, but doing a lot of secular models and Christians, so that's called like integration. But then there's mm -hmm. also the biblical counseling, which is not about integration, but it's really more about, let's just specifically focus on what the word of God says. Um, not necessarily ignoring everything from the world, like science and things, but right. it's just kind of focusing on like the biblical worldview. Let's draw you closer to Christ. And this has got to be first and foremost, um, as opposed to some of the secular counseling um models which which kind of fall short when it comes to the gospel so you'll find those differences in the christian counseling field and obviously the big difference with the secular is is the introduction and the authority of the gospel interesting stuff there i just yesterday in my morning quiet time i i I, re, I, I started a reread of Rick Warren's A Purpose Driven Life, mm -hmm. which I hadn't picked it up in a while. It was in my library. Yeah. And, and day one is actually, it starts with God. And he kind of makes that important distinction that you're talking about, yeah. you know, more broadly. But, you know, right, it's not like loving myself, self-help. It right. starts with, that's literally his day one. It starts with God. I really, so that, that made, made me think of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's a great book, too. It helps help a lot of people um, just ha help them find their purpose and such, too. So good book. Hey, so we're going to we're going to talk a little bit more now about your Design to Be Mine marriage course. Yeah. And here's my little segue. OK, and this is a little Peter being on a soapbox, but I'll keep it for less than 30 seconds to 45 <laughs> seconds. And here's what it is. And I'd be curious about your thoughts on kind of just this concept, because uh, I spend a lot of time in like two different worlds that I feel like are two separate when to me, they're very like much the same world. And he, yeah. these are my two worlds there. So I'm a family law attorney in Chicago, which oftentimes means you're involved in divorce cases. So you're in like in like divorce legal world. Yeah. I also spend a fair amount of time in, let's just call it um, uh, Christ, 
mainstream Christian working on my marriage, going to marriage conferences and stuff. We were just at one of the, uh, my wife and I were just at one of the uh, Family Life Weekend to Remember conferences. Yeah, yeah. S- small world. The timing is irrelevant, but it just happened. Sure. And here's what I found is like in, in my divorce hat world, like nobody is is promoting the idea that there can be reconciliation Mm -hmm. and marriage improvement, even if you're kind of like in a very crisis situation. Yeah. And conversely, I feel like when you're at a Christian marriage conference, like you can't even talk about divorce or or something like that. Whereas, you know, I guess my, my real world is like, a lot of times there's overlap. And sometimes when you're mm-hmm. in that crisis situation, yeah. uh, that's actually the best time to like affect change. So that's, that's my little marital soapbox of mm-hmm. like, just kind of like I, re- I'm really actually trying to be that person who oftentimes is the, is the mesh. Cause uh, I, I do genuinely find that. And, and there's even like data on the point that something like a third of people who are in the family law courts are sort of mixed agenda, I think, is some of the phraseology. Like they're not sure if they want to go forward with a divorce. They don't really know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But yet conversely, I think a lot of times the church says, and I had a, a client of mine say this to me in the last few years who was a referral from a a pastor at a church Mm -hmm. where it was kind of like, you know, I was working with, I'm just making up the names here. I was working with pastor bill, but then once the case got in court, he just kind of said, you know, good luck Mm -hmm. or something. And and then it was no longer kind of like there can be sort of change and improvement there. So that's my little theory, not theory for the day. That's very genuinely my experience. Um, I don't know where I'm going with that other than to say, I feel strongly about that point. Yeah. You, do you yeah, see that well, in your experience? I mean, you're a counselor. Yeah. So, I mean, I would imagine you're dealing with the person who could be at a, a, a broad continuum of circumstances in their relationships. Yeah. We, we see people, we hardly ever see someone come through the doors that say, you know, I just was just thinking about making my marriage a little bit better, you know, and, and, and it's usually at the point of, you know, crisis, um, right. or, um, you know, maybe someone threatened something or the anger has gone on for years or whatever that might be, or miscommunications or emotional affair, or it, oftentimes it, I don't want to say they come to counseling too late, although that has happened, I suppose. Um, right. But at the very least, they come in to it at a point of crisis where it's just like we, something needs to change or else. Um, right. Or right. else that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to end up in divorce or whatnot. Um, again, just wherever in the, in the spectrum there, they, you know, they certainly come in. And, but we've also seen too, and, and unfortunately, I'm sure you've seen a lot of this too, is that with Christian families and such, uh, the, just the issues of, of abuse and, you know, where it's it, about 80, 90% of the times it's men uh, with anger, emotional abuse and, and physical abuse, uh, more often emotional abuse and mental abuse and things of that nature where, where that can be very difficult to work on. We, and that doesn't, we can't do marriage counseling with that. Um, that's actually going to harm, do more harm to the, the victim than it is anything. So we, we have to separate them basically and work on the man and work on the woman with the woman and, and uh, just separately. Cause again, marriage counseling, you just can't do marriage counseling with, with someone who's abusive, but, uh, but yeah, we certainly see a lot of people coming in in different times. And of course, being a counselor, I'm an optimist, uh, meaning right. that, you know, this marriage is salvageable, you know, we mm-hmm. can save it, but it does require a lot of, um, I call it log lifting, uh, which is, you know, remove the log out of your own eye instead right. of focusing on the spec um, right. and the others. And um, it takes a lot of, of humility. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, grace. It takes a lot of um, hard emotional work to, to rebuild the marriage, but it, it's absolutely possible. 
uh, even for those who might be in abusive relationships too. Um, it's possible, but there has to be a brokenness coming from the one who's abusive. And if they are not broken, then, then it's going to go in the wrong direction towards a divorce, um, or I should say a bad direction. Um, in yeah. Divorce. So it's sad. What, um, what, what, what motivated you or what was kind of the origin story of your course designed to be mine? Yeah, um, I think, and ultimately as a counselor, I just, I just want to help people. <laughs> um, about, yeah. I would say about 40 to 50% of our, um, of our clients are marriage clients. Um, I know I've had a, a, a good marriage myself. Uh, I've certainly been blessed to have the wife that I do. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, but I know that in counseling with, with men and couples that there are a number of themes, uh, that I found that, um, that I've pretty much brought up in almost all of my counseling with all my counseling couples. And I thought, you know, uh, why don't, why don't we put something together <laughs> to, to at least um, complement um, counseling, or if people are not ready for counseling, but they're, they're wanting to, to learn more and build their marriage, then at least we can put those themes together in one program and uh, that we can help, uh, help more people and, and, um, and help them develop intimacy and a stronger connection with one another um, outside of the counseling office. So that was pretty much the um, the background story to, uh, for coming up with this, I, I had taken a, um, I wanted to do more than counseling and I wanted to do something that was cheaper than counseling too, um, because I know that counseling can be really expensive. And so the less, uh, the more work that people do outside of the counseling office, the more money they spend. So, uh, or rather the less money they spend outside of the counseling office, the more they come Got in it. the counseling office, the more money they'll spend, but it could be very much be worth it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just sure. another avenue uh, of uh, helping uh, helping people and uh, helping marriages succeed. Oh, that's awesome. I I skimmed your five, it's f your course is five lessons and I don't want to give away all your great material, surely. And, you know, we're only going to be on here for another, I don't know, seven, seven to 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, what are a couple bullet points though that, you know, as a prospective buyer myself, um, yeah. what, what should somebody you know, look for in your course or what, what's, what's there, you know, what would you say, boy, these are a couple really cool things that are part of the course. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got a few things going on. I've got five different modules and each of those modules have about uh, uh, four or five lessons in each one. Oh, wow. And ultimately the whole thing is about um, being connected and connecting with your spouse and that connecting with your spouse happens emotionally uh, as well as physically. And so the first, uh, the first module designed to be intimate is just about God's design, about intimacy and how, uh, what to look for when we develop intimacy, which is really all about the heart. Um, scripture actually talks a lot about this and God shares about, you know, that when he was choosing David, you know, um, that he was choosing David because he was a man after God's own heart type thing. Right. And sure. it's, it's all about the heart. And so heart connection is about intimacy. And so ultimately it's about it's saying, all right, this is what's inside the heart. So this is our destination when we're talking about developing intimacy with our spouses. I go on to talk about uh, design to be different, which case how we're created in God's image um, just shows that we reflect different parts of God and how this shows up in your relationships. And I'm excited about that uh, because, uh, you know, it's a little test that I kind of developed and I'm like, all right, let's see how people are. And I've done this in seminars before. And and it's funny because people are, you know, just just shows how you complement uh, one another and strengths and weaknesses in terms of how we're, we reflect God. But then I kind of move on to communication. Like, how is it that you um, can become more connected and how you talk with each other? I go into the things about where people get uh, messed up and where communication oftentimes fails between husbands and wives. And then mm -hmm. go into conflict resolution uh, designed to be redeemed and then and then the one uh, module, the last module is about designed to be one, which is all about sexual uh, connectedness and uh, physical intimacy. And this is something that's really not talked about in the church. It's not talked about in the Christian community nearly as much. And that intimacy has to go heart to heart connection, but also hip to hip connection. Both are really right. important. 
And right. if we're, we're not focused on these, on the heart connection and the hip connection, then we're not going to develop that intimacy. And so ultimately it's about how do we know and be known? How do we become more intimate as spouses and taking steps to become more, uh, more intimate? And ultimately it'll be more becoming more like Christ. And uh, that's kind of the secondary aspect of the course, which is, you know, becoming more like Christ and how we talk and how we relate and how we communicate and, and uh, you know, uh, how we develop intimacy with one another because marriage is, uh, a picture of the greater marriage between the bride, the church, and the bride, sure. which is Christ. And so I want to really incorporate that into uh, into everything as well. Wow, those really sound like great topics. Yeah, definitely a couple areas there I could uh, I could do a deep dive on in terms of my personal struggles. So we um, all can. We all can. <clears throat> for sure. Um, how can uh, how can I communicate with my wife better? Is there a quick? What would be your top two bullets? Uh, yes, dear. No. Um, <laughs> communicating with the wife probably the top two bullets are this don't get stuck on the facts and the fixes um but instead you have to communicate to the feelings and to the emotions and so if kind of like looking at a uh, uh like a fish hook you know if you were to uh, look at the four levels of communication there's the the cliche right the facts and the fixes the thoughts and the feelings and you have to listen to the thoughts and the feelings and you have to identify them and relate to them. Make sure that she understands that you understand her thoughts and feelings before going into whether or not she was right in what she said or going into how to help her or anything of that nature. Always stick with and go to the feelings that has to be the destination um, when it comes to listening to your spouse. Because when you do that, she'll feel like her heart is connected to your heart because you understand her heart and she'll be like, yes, this is what I desire. This is what I want. Yeah. No, yeah. I, they had a similar kind of picture in, in my uh, Weekend to Remember guide. I think they yeah. had five. I think the bottom, bottom one, I think feelings was second from the bottom. And then I think it was something like, you know, being vulnerable or something. Yeah. But I suppose there's some overlap there. No, that's a great one. Yeah, I mean, that's I a, feel like as men, particularly, you go to the fix first yeah. instead of kind of the listen and feeling. And, you know, I know, well, not only listening to my wife, whose name is Regan, but also I know she expresses to me, you know, I want you to express your feelings right. to Peter, which is also not necessarily a strength of mine. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's that's when I, um, you know, want to be better on myself for sure. Yeah. So those are connectedness. It's connection of the heart, the, the thoughts, yeah. the feelings, the beliefs, and that's the vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah. Just I don't want to. I don't. Uh, I don't want to abuse your time, Fred. You were so. I'm so appreciative of you jumping on here, and I'm I'm really excited to dig in and learn more about your course going forward. Anything else uh, by way of a, if I just said, um, asked you for a marriage tip or two for somebody who's, who's struggling a little bit or who's just whatever, in, in let's just call it even, maybe they're not in the heart attack stage, but maybe they're just in the blah stage. What, 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 what's a thing or two you would go to beyond even the communication piece? Yeah, well, the communication part is, is, is really important. And I think ultimately it's about where the heart is. And so my question would be is, where is your heart? Are you in the yeah. place of anger and bitterness and resentment? And what's going on inside there? And uh, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to identifying that place, if once we can identify that place, then we can kind of look at moving forward and, and where we go. Because for everyone, it's just a little bit different. Yeah. There, there might be some significant hurts of the past. Um, or of the recent present or that are going on right now. And uh, these things can be overcome, but it's, it's important to first identify where you are and then those obstacles to that, that prevent you from moving forward. So if we can figure that out, then we can kind of set a game plan about how to move forward in uh, whatever struggle uh, is going on uh, inside the heart. Uh, the scripture says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the heart, we produce fruit. And so the question is, is what's going on inside the heart? And that's, that's where I really want to focus on um, in helping people. And so that's what I would say, identify what's going on inside the heart. How, what is it that you're feeling? Um, 
and and you know start to identify that and then you can start moving uh, forward. You might need help to do it. And uh, mm -hmm. as a good counselor, I might be very helpful with that uh, because sometimes we just, our hearts just need to change uh, a little bit. Um, uh, James talks about uh, the, the wisdom of, uh, of the world, which talks about bitter envy and selfish ambition. Um, and then the, the wisdom of, of God, which is, um, you know, which is a different wisdom, which is full of mercy and compassion. And uh, so it's, again, it's kind of ascertaining what's going on inside the heart, you know, mm. living towards a certain, certain wisdom there. Yeah, great stuff there. Uh, is there a, mm -hmm. you've, uh, you've launched your course, and I know you have a waiting list for your next launch, but who, do you have a, is there a person or a couple, like sort of a specific couple who you think this is best for, or who yeah. maybe even in the early stages here you've gotten feedback from? It's like, this is a great resource for me as, you know, I'm a 48-year-old man who lives in the northwest suburbs of Chicago, struggling in my marriage after 17 years. Or is there a, is there, is there kind of a target who this might be best for? Yeah, I would, I would say that um, ultimately for couples ideally um, where you are struggling in your marriage and uh, you you just want it to be better you want to be more connected with your spouse um, I, I think it's for you it's basically for those who want to restore their marriage uh, so even if they're in a bad place versus just kind of refresh it and just make it better um, you don't have to be like on the brink of divorce uh, you don't necessarily have to be you know everything's just fine and dandy uh, everyone's going to learn something in, in that process and uh, but the 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 uh, probably those who are more in crisis might need the help of a counselor too. Um, but if you are in counseling, I'd say this is going to be something that's going to perhaps cut back on the, on the amount of counseling that's needed. But if you're just thinking about counseling, then this course is probably for you too. Um, and if your spouse is unwilling, I would say it, the course is still going to be. Um, going to be helpful, even though it's better to do it as with husband and wife together, um, that it's still going to be worth something. You're still going to get something out of it, even if your spouse is not willing, because once you start to watch and, and in your faith starts to change and, and you, your behavior, your actions and your heart starts to change, that automatically means the other person is going to adapt to that somehow. And so they'll probably change too. You're going to influence them uh, for the better or for the worse. So in any of those situations, uh, the course would be helpful. Yeah, that's great. I feel like, yeah, like the my spouse won't do it or something is kind of a lame excuse. I, I think the, the pastor at my last church we attended in Des Plaines, Illinois, was um, he used to do a marriage training. I think it was called Improve Your Marriage by Yourself or something. And obviously, I was doing it with my, my spouse. But yeah. um, there's a lot to that, a point of like, there's a lot I can do, even if my um, wife, in my case, were kind of yes. giving me a little hard no. I mean, there's a, there's a lot I can do, but I don't, I don't want to go down that road. So, well, um, thanks again, Fred, for joining us. And where can somebody find your course and or get on your waiting list or, or do Absolutely. anything to interact with your counseling organization? Uh, we've, you know, I really appreciate you as a great resource. Sure. No, I appreciate it. And I appreciate being here. And you can certainly uh, find the course at Designed to Be Mine. That's a design, the number two, the letter B, mine, uh, or just type in the words to be mine, either one, designed to be mine.com. And uh, you'll get, have access to our course. You'll be able to sign up for our waiting list and you'll get more information about the course and what's in each module uh, as well. And uh, also, the counseling organization is uh, uh, Found Christ Council. Uh, dot org. Uh, that's found Christ Council, C O U N S E L, um, uh, dot org. And that's where Foundations Christian Counseling Services, that's where we're located and, and uh, on the web. And it'll tell you a little bit more about our organization as well. Have you had any interesting sales? Like, you know, to me, the powerful thing that I'm motivated to do a course on as well is like, my gosh, we can be serving people in the entire not, I guess, you know, the entire English speaking world. Yeah. Um, have you gotten any sales out of like Australia or something that have been like, wow, that's incredible. <laughs> um, 
Well, we've only launched once. Um, okay. And so most of the people I think are in the Northeast Pennsylvania, okay. um, New York area. Um, but we, we have counseled uh, missionaries from other locations and we've counseled uh, uh, individuals from other countries and things of that nature too at times. So, uh, so it's certainly in the counseling, but in regards to the course, not yet. But, okay, just uh, just curious, because to me yeah. that's like the the powerful thing, like to aspire to with with the digital products, right? Because like legal services and counseling services, right? You're sort of limited in the sense of like time and and sort of physical geography. Whereas, sure. my gosh, if you have a cool course like designed to be mine, it's like Australia, um, Thailand, and boom. So, well, be hopefully the second launch. Yeah. But hopefully awesome. When it happens, we'll, we'll have that. Yeah. Well, this podcast is going to help you, Fred. So, all right. Well, thanks again for your time, Fred, and be well. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. All right. Take care. Bye.